Rabies Post Exposure Prophylaxis PEP How to infiltrate animal bite wounds with recombinant rabies human monoclonal antibody Rabies Shield In category 3 are severe rabies exposures in addition to wound cleansing and full course of rabies vaccination immediate infiltration of all wounds with RMAB is life-saving. When administering RMAB, it is important to thoroughly infiltrate around and into the wound or wounds, allowing RMAP to neutralize the rabies virus present locally. Thus preventing the risk of rabies and death. The World Health Organization WHO now recommends the use of RMAP for passive immunization in category 3 or severe exposures. Now, let us see how wounds are infiltrated using RMAP. Before starting, check the expiry date and look for any impurities in it. Examine the patient thoroughly and note the number and type of all bite wounds. Weigh the patient and calculate the dose, volume of RMAP required that is, at the rate of 3.33 IU per kg body weight. Based on the number and the size of wounds, if the calculated volume of RMAP is inadequate to infiltrate all wounds, then RMAP shall be diluted with sterile normal saline to a volume sufficient to infiltrate all wounds. Choose a disposable syringe and a suitable size needle. For small wound that is 1 inch and less size, use 1 ml conventional insulin syringe or 1 ml syringe with detachable 26 G needle of 1 inch long. For medium size wound that is 1 to 2 inches, use 2 ml syringe and 26 G detachable needle of 1 inch long. For large wound that is 2 inches and more, use 5 ml syringe and 23 or 24 G detachable needle of 1 inch long. However, in a patient having wounds of different sizes, based on clinical experience, the syringes and the needles of suitable sizes shall be used interchangeably. Use any disinfectant hand rub to cleanse the hands. Warm the RMAB in your hand as this will reduce the pain of injection. Wear a clean apron and disposable gloves. Anatomically make sure there are no arteries and bigger nerves underneath adjacent the wound or wounds to avoid accidental damages while injecting RMAP. Do not inject RMAP into veins and arteries. Methods of Infiltration Static Insert the needle, aspirate to ensure no backflow of blood and then inject slowly. This is done in small and superficial wounds. Continuous Insert the needle, aspirate to ensure no backflow of blood 
and then inject into the surrounding area with continuous movement. This is done in larger and deeper wounds. Rotate the angle of the needle to allow maximal infiltration through one puncture site. If required, additional punctures should be through an area already infiltrated. In deep wounds, the base of the wound should be infiltrated. Successful Wound Infiltration Slight oozing of RMAP covering the raw surface of the wound is a sign of successful wound infiltration. Wound infiltration should be done with minimum number of needle punctures. Now, let us see how different wounds in patients of different ages and genders and in different sites of the body are infiltrated with RMAP in a specialty anti-rabies clinic of repute in Bangalore. Here is a boy with bites on his face and fingers. The RMAP is infiltrated into and around the wounds using an insulin syringe. It is important to infiltrate all wounds with patience and caution. Here is a young lady with multiple wounds on the leg. All wounds, irrespective of their sizes, are thoroughly infiltrated with RMAP using a 5 ml syringe and 24 G needle. In long wounds, to avoid multiple punctures, a continuous infiltration approach is used by moving the needle below the wound. Here is a young adult male with superficial and healing wounds on the fingers and fingertips. Using an insulin syringe, Small quantities of RMAB is carefully infiltrated into all wounds. <laughs> While injecting wounds on the fingertips, care is taken by injecting small quantities to prevent compartment syndrome. In conclusion, use of rabies monoclonal antibody, particularly infiltrating all wounds, is life-saving in Category 3 or severe rabies exposures.